So this hunt is an annual thing for us. We go sheep hunting every year. That's just a given. And I've been doing it for 20 years. And since the first time I ever went, I've been obsessed with it. Like I have to go every year. And our, you know, our goal with any sheep hunt is just to uh, like, yeah, I mean, get out in the mountains and spend time hunting sheep. It's like the process is what's really fun and really rewarding. It's always a goal to kill a nice mature ram and bring home sheep meat and enjoy time in the mountains away from town and try ourselves against the elements and prove you still got it. You put pressure on yourself, at least we do, to like to succeed and get rams and find what you're looking for. But we also understand that like sometimes stuff just doesn't shake out. It gets a little like there's some uh, an amount of stress to it because you're, you're like putting in so much effort, so much effort trying to to get what you're after. And and yeah, the last couple of years we you know, it's, we found good rams. It just is a matter of not working out the way we hoped it would. <laughs> I always get a little nervous, like right leading up to a sheep hunt, just because there's so many unknowns. You don't know exactly what you're going to be dealing with or what you're going to find and just kind of jitters, excitement, like not really scared or, or nervous, you know, worried that we aren't going to be able to find something because either we will or we won't, you know, but we're going to have fun in the process. You start getting into the mountains and it's just like, oh man, this is this is gonna hurt. <laughs> this is like these mountains are a lot bigger than I remember them being, or it it's it's you can't really put it into words or pictures. Nothing does it justice like like standing there at the base of all these mountains, knowing that you're gonna get your ass kicked and you gotta, you know, there's no way you're gonna get around but by your feet and carrying a heavy backpack. And if you sheep hunt long enough, you're going to encounter some pretty awful weather and stretches of bad weather and getting snowed on in the beginning of August. And I could say right off the bat that not for us this year, but I'm sure a lot of people's wild card was thrown at them that they closed down a huge area that people sheep hunt in like four, four days before the season yeah. opened or five days before the season opened. So that didn't affect us at all, but that's the kind of stuff that you can get, that's a total wild card, you know, that if they close down a season on you right before you're gonna go, what do you do then? Yeah, we've had had a couple hard winters in a row and, and sheep in a lot of parts of the state um, did get winter killed pretty bad, um, which is not a terribly abnormal thing up here. It was, a, it was an exceptionally bad one, but uh, as far as just being up here, I mean, this is home for us. So we, and we've been doing it long enough there's always chance for, I mean, we've both encountered like just horrendous weather, but you, you go prepared for all to deal with all that stuff, you know, good, good rain gear, good shelters, um, you know, fallback options for, you know, surviving and dealing with, dealing with whatever conditions, you know, you never know. Like this year, the smoke was real bad for the first few days where, to where you almost can't see anything. And it's pretty important to be able to see stuff when you're sheep hunting and looking for sheep from miles away. Um, so there's all, you know, there's there's a number of stuff, but it, it doesn't really phase us. So this year's hunt, we got in the mountains, and a lot like a lot of years, it takes us a while to get to where like our kind of jumping off point where we're going to start hunting, and and it's always it's always encouraging when you can when you start seeing sheep right away, like. You know, Frank spotted a couple of rams right away and we're seeing lambs and ewes because, you know, for, for perspective, it's not been uncommon on our hunts to like, from our jumping off point to hike for two or three days. Last year, we, we, we walked for a week before we saw a single sheep. We don't, I think that that's why we hunt so well together, Tyler and I do, is because we're slow, both of us are, and we're like, <laughs> A lot of people just want to go. They just start hiking and they'll hike until they're soaked in sweat and panting and tired. And, and I think that's a lot of maybe misconceptions that people might have because sheep hunting and a lot of other mountain hunting is, is difficult and you walk, you end up covering a lot of miles, but just walking fast miles doesn't translate to success necessarily. People walk by animals that 
you know, they, that they would have seen if they slow down. Sometimes we've looked at glassed mountains over for more than a day before all of a sudden a sheet pops out that's really been around there the whole time, just to never, never in a spot where you could see them. Another thing that's a little overwhelming when you start looking at these mountains when you get up there is how many spots there are that you can't see on a, even a huge mountain that you, you know, you looking up at this mountain or at distant mountains, there's, you can only maybe see 20 or 30% of the actual ground that's there. So like we saw some sheep pretty quickly and then uh, solidified our plan and started hiking and it was so smoky you like less than a mile of visibility and you know ideally you're wanting to glass you know look at stuff that's up, you know five six miles away sometimes that you're you're looking for rams and uh we got to a point like, like kind of a nice vantage vantage point um on the edge where we really wanted to start hunting and you couldn't see anything so we just decided to wait and, and park it and set up camp yeah, the next morning you, you yeah. stuck your head out the tent and there was a legal ram right up above, like 700 yards away up above our tent. That's a tough decision to make <laughs> on the first day to see a legal ram, but knowing, I don't know, I knew we had two weeks. I was like, I can't. I thought about it for a while though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, I can't just go shoot this ram right now. And it would have been the way the terrain was above where the tent was, it would have been simple to just go up and get above him and kill him. The wind was perfect, everything was lined up perfectly. And I know a lot of people would have just gone and shot that ram, but yeah. I don't know. Over the whole year talking about going here to the spot and I was like, I can't do that on the first day. No way. Yeah. You know, once once you shoot the first the first sheep, the uh, the clock's ticking, and you have to make some hard decisions. So, you know, in that case, it was a little easier to make the decision to wait and see see what else we could find. And yeah, so we that day we ended up we packed up and headed up a, a canyon, a really steep, um, narrow canyon that had a lot. It was like almost more mountain goat country than sheep country, but. Um, the spot, a lot of spots in there where, you know, a big ram could hide out and no one would ever find him unless he happened to step out in the right spot. And uh, there's also a lot of places up that particular canyon that you would never, you could see all the rams you wanted to and you just could never get to them. Yep. There was too many areas that you, we couldn't even get out of the canyon into these side canyons, just like sheer cliffs to get to start to get into these side side canyons where you'd have to be like, I'm kind of glad we didn't see anything in there yeah. because you just have to wait for them to make a mistake or go somewhere where you can get to them. We kind of did like the morning up where the sheep are normally up and feeding to go up the canyon and then we stopped and took a nap and had lunch and kind of waited until one they would be, normally be getting up in the afternoon to feed again and made our push back out during that feeding cycle. Yeah, because that's that's the, especially in spots like that, that's your, be your best times to figure out what sheep are in an area, that's when they're up feeding. You know, especially in rougher country, if you're trying to find them when they're bedded down, you know, either you're gonna see them or they could be bedded behind that one rock or that one outcropping and you're just never gonna see them unless they're up moving around. Morning number six or whatever it is, five or six, we, uh, got up and Frank spotted three, well there's three rams that we can see total, three good sized rams, um, kind of intermingling with some lambs and ewes over here down low. Kind of where we've been overlooking last the last night and one ram looks really good and another ram looks like he could be a really good one too. So we're just packing up our yard sale and gonna go after him. When I put the spotting scope on the, on the sheep, First, that's all I saw was ewes and lambs. And then down below them, even further down in the valley, um, I saw two rams and they were actually button heads. And while I was watching that, just in the corner of the spotting scope, so I have it zoomed in 60 power, zoomed all the way in. And just in the corner of the spotting scope, I just see 
one horn sticking out like this from behind the sheep was laying down in grass and I couldn't see its body because it was kind of like over this little edge and I could just see one horn. So I readjusted the spotting scope and that's when he was in the tent still and I was like, oh man, there's a really <laughs> nice, it's all the same sheep as we saw last night, except for there's one addition, this new ram showed up. And he was, he was one, one that, you know, call, call it like one lookers where like one look, even from that angle, there's no doubt that that's like a nice ram one that you want to go after. We ultimately just decided to take everything with us. One of the most nerve wracking things about stalking a sheep is leaving them. A general principle of stalking sheep is you want to get out completely out of sight and not be in sight until you're in rifle range. Sheep look down most of the time for danger. So if you can get above them without them seeing you, you're, you're in pretty good shape. It's been a little less than two hours, almost two hours since we left sight of those rams. We made it up. We, we're pretty sure we're, we're right up above them. This is the nervous part. This is the part we hate where you don't have sight of them. And we got to try to creep around here, get them located, and hopefully get it. We know there's one good one in there, but we want to get a really good look at all of them if we can. It was just finding a spot to shoot from. We were looking over the edge of this cliff like leaning, you know, uphill, your your body's uphill this way and you're shooting straight downhill this way. So it was, it was not the easiest shooting position, but it sucked. Yeah. Okay, all right, well, I'll just watch it whenever you're ready. Good hit. Dude, that's a big sheep. Dude, <laughs> you just doubled up, Tyler. <laughs> it's gotta be the nicest sheep I've ever killed. Oh my god, man. I don't know, for I think both of us, that moment right after both sheep are down, it's just like this huge weight comes off of you. You know, just the, the it's kind of stressful and it's intense. Um, there's a lot of effort and a lot at stake. You know, you're really, really hoping it works out. It's not, you know, we're not up there because we don't care. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty damn good feeling when like two good rams down or a, you know, even if it's just one, you know, you get, get a ram down and it's pretty special uh, walking up walking up to him the first time and kind of just enjoy that moment for a little bit eat some food and then right back right back to business we uh, got our sheep cut up all our meat bagged and cooling off under that tarp to kind of keep it out of the sun and we got full full load of camp so it's we're gonna do it in two trips it's less likely we figure that something's gonna mess with our meat up here as opposed to down in the main valley we've been seeing some grizzly bears cruising around so um, it should be totally fine here till tomorrow tomorrow morning we'll come up here with empty packs pick it up and be on our way it's about as good as it gets it didn't rain a drop it was we walked I figured 37 miles was the entire sheep hunt, which is unheard of. I think it's the shortest walk that I've ever that I've ever done for a sheep. Um, yeah, ideal weather. Everything about it was just perfect. Two awesome rams. Yeah, and it's cool enough as it is. But when you, you know, like had had to stay up all night holding your tents up in the wind, or had your tent explode and and your rain gear fail and just get completely soaked and or get snowed on and stuck in your tent for days like you really like appreciate being in that country right then 